All right, this is a video to show you how to use the SIGWIN based uh, reverse spider tool. Um, I actually recorded an earlier video, but it didn't work out entirely. So I have to kind of record the whole thing again. All right, so let's go ahead and do some work here. So the first thing you want to do is to navigate to the processor uh, folder, which is in under the shared folder in your class. And then what you need to do is to download uh, this file, which is called sig reverse spider.zip. And what I'll do is I am going to redo everything and pretend that uh, I have not um, unzipped the file. So I'm going to delete you know, this folder here. Actually, I'm deleting all of them. Okay, fine. You know, that's, that's all good too. <laughs> so I'm deleting everything that I set up a little bit earlier in the day. And we're going to skip. And we'll try to delete that one more time because I have. Oh, okay. I know why it's not working. There we go. Um, get out of here. And then we'll go ahead and delete the folder here. So this is obviously not something that you have to do because you know I am resetting my environment so that it is resembling what you're going to get when you work on this. All right. So this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so it's all done here. And what we're going to do is to go to the processor subfolder, which is also where you get the assembler. But this time we're going to download uh, sig spider.zip, which is this file. It is relatively big, about 600 megabytes, uh, but it's not excessively big that you cannot download it. Um, so you go to action and you click on download. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, and you can see that it's downloading right now. Um, and this is really fast because it's a virtual machine that is connected to uh, the district's infrastructure. So, you know, everything is quote unquote local. And that's why the uh, download speed is excessively fast in this, in this case. If you have a 10 megabyte per second connection, um, it's going to take you about a minute. So it still won't say it is like, you know, super long. Okay, so now that it's downloaded, you know, as you can see from here in the browser, don't open it, okay? Do not open the zip file. Use your file explorer to navigate to the downloads folder or wherever you download this file. Um, and the Windows built-in zip program does not work well with this. So my recommendation, okay, is to go download 7-zip for Windows. So 7-zip uh, download. And you want to have it installed on your computer in order to utilize your know, 7-zip. It's open source, so it's not fr it's free. You don't have to. Um, nobody is going to ask you for your your email address or anything like that. Uh, it's just a much better tool for archiving archiving uh, folders and whatnot. So anyway, all the school computers have this already installed, so I can uh, use that tool. So what you do once you have 7-zip installed is you go to the folder where you download the um, 600 megabyte you know, zip file and then right click on it. Do not double click it, right click on it. And then you go to 7-zip because once 7-zip is installed in Windows, it will give you these options. And I'm just gonna choose uh, extract here. Um, you can always extract it to, um, you know, sick wind, uh, sick river spider, you know, um, let's do that. Let's extract it to uh, Sig River Spider. Um, it just adds one more level of folder. Um, it's not bad. Okay, it's, it's just you know, it's it's no big deal. Um, so we'll go ahead and extract it. So this is also really fast because it's running inside a virtual machine, and the virtual machine has a virtual file system in the back end, um, and that is not a real file system. You know, it's using a lot of uh, cached um, memory, you know, instead of an actual hard drive or flash drive. So that's why it is, it's excessively fast, you know, compared to what you typically get, you know, when you're working with a um, thumb drive. But this entire thing can be installed onto a thumb drive. I'll show you guys what I mean by that in just a little bit. And I'm waiting for this to download. While it's doing this, we can now go back to the browser. And what we'll do is we, we will go to the assembler, which is the assembler that I have. Okay, this is the actual assembler. 
So what you're going to do is to go uh, make a new one. If you already have a copy, you don't have to make a new copy. You can just use your existing one. But since I want to demonstrate the whole process, I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to make a copy and the name is assembler to be deleted because you know this is just for demonstration purposes so I'm not intending to keep this around for longer than need to so we'll go ahead and press the enter key and you know it's making a copy right now and again I'm going to go back and check on the uh, decompression it's already done all right so now we got a few things to do so we go to um, oh we have to open up a command line interface in Windows. So you go here and then you just search for CMD, CMD. It is the command line interface. You don't need administrative right, okay? So um, just a regular user uh, is fine. And then from here, we need to CD to downloads or wherever you downloaded um, the zip file. And I put it here. I also unzip it here. So that means if I do a dir, I can see the uh, zip file as well as the folder that is unzipped. So I go into the unzip you know, folder, which is sig river spider. I do another dir. It has one single folder here, and this is what I said a little bit earlier. It creates one additional level of you new know, folders, but it's not a big deal. You just have to cd again to sigwin. And then in here, um, it has three batch files. So what you want to do is to run the last one, which is sigwin-portable.cmd. So run that. And what that is going to do is it will start up sigwin. Sigwin is um, essentially an emulation layer that gives you um, a, a command line interface that looks like the bash uh, user interface. It also gives you a lot of the usual tools that people use in Linux slash Unix environments. So this is really quite, kind of cool. Uh, we can do a dir here. And the next thing we do is we go to River Spider, like so. And then we do a dirt over here. And you can see there are quite a few files. Now, there are a few files that you have to modify. One is uh, webapp.url. The other one is secretstring.txt. Now, the, the, the default secretstring.txt has a default password. Um, you know, which is something that you may not want to continue to use. So you might want to change that. So I'm going to use Notepad. And nice thing about uh, using Zigwin is you actually have access to all the Windows commands and tools as well as the Linux commands and tools. So if you don't want to use VI because it does take a little bit of time to get used to it, you can use Notepad. Okay, so I'm just going to Notepad here. And, <coughs> excuse me. This is the default password, and you can change that. So I'm just going to change it to one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. Okay, which is definitely not a strong password, but it's not important for this purpose. So Control S, save the file. I have to remember one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D is my new password. Now we get back to the um, browser, and we go to the new assembler that I just copied over. And in your case, if you have one that's already uh, if you already have a copy of the original assembler, you can just use that one too. So we go to extensions, we go to app script. And then what you want to do is to look up a function called uh, gen digest. Okay, so we go to gen digest, which is all the way down here. And this is a tool for you to generate the digest that is needed for the password that we have chosen. So you want to change my secret string to one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, or you know, whichever passcode you have decided to use. And then the next thing you need to do is to control S, save the file first. So control S, you know, save um, the app script. And then instead of using run, which does not give you any output, you want to use debug because you know that will give it will output the array in the console so you can copy and paste it. So I hit uh, debug and it will ask you for authorization. <clears throat> so go ahead and you'll know, just uh, grant the app script you know, all the uh, access that it needs. There you go. All right. So now we, after we execute, you can see there's an exec execution log here. Scroll all the way to the, to the top. 
and you want to start copying from this um, open square bracket and just kind of copy everything you know and okay let me do that one more time so copy everything all the way to the the matching close square bracket down here and then you type control C or you know right click and copy there we go and that's all we need um, in the execution log so now we can we can close it and then what we do next is to scroll all the way back up to simple auth and what you want to do is to highlight everything starting with the open square bracket again and include everything all the way to the match and close your know, square bracket which is over here and since we already have the new um, digest in the clipboard we can now just do a right click and um, paste there we go and now the string is copied there we go all right so I just replaced you know, everything in um, uh, in simple auth you know the entire you know, string here um, so that means you know um, it is now having a digest that is matching the new passcode of um, one two three four a b c d so type control s again save the file because otherwise you know this is temporary it's not uh, saving the changes yet and then the next thing you need you, you need to do is to go to deploy and go to new deployment and we want a web app deployment so this is already correct given the description you know um, river spider is fine um, execute as me you know whatever your ID is is fine um, the other option is to um, user accessing the web app it's not going to be important because you're going to be using it after you sign in so you want to execute as me and uh, who has access you can you know you can basically give it to anyone uh, because you're going to be the only one with access to this uh, particular uh, document you can always limit it to only myself you know which is you know fine too but I'm just going to use you know anyone because in reality nobody actually has access to it um, other than yourself so we click um, deploy Oh, I take it back. You have to use anyone, um, you know, in the previous screen, um, because we need to use a do post from outside so that we can access it. So you have to choose anyone. You cannot use, um, you cannot, um, you can, you cannot limit, you know, that only you can access it. So you do have to choose anyone in that screen. All right. So now we are getting to the new deployment screen, which has you know, the web app URL. So click copy here so that we copy this uh, entire URL into the clipboard like so. And then we switch back to um, Sigwin over here. And oh, I'm still inside uh, Notepad so we can get out of Notepad now. Uh, so this one you know, is already updated to the actual um, access code. So we can now close it. Okay, get out of this. And then the next thing we need to do is to change um, app web app dot URL. So um, same thing here, Notepad uh, web app dot URL, and it's just a text file. Same thing. You um, select the entire text here, go to edit and paste because I already copied it earlier from the browser. So now I have a new um, web app you know, URL here. Make sure that we save the file. So go to file and save um, and then we can close uh, notepad again and do another ls just to make sure um, everything is here web app url is here and so is secret string txt and if you want to double check you know, you can always double check first so now on the browser side we can click done because we are done you know setting up the entire thing and we can now go back to the assembler and focus on the assembler at this point. So you can see the source code is you know, whatever code that I was talking about earlier in today's lecture. So what now is a perfect time to test um, uh, River Spider. So inside the folder of River Spider, you do a dot slash and then submit dot sh. You know, that's the name of the bash shell file or the bash file. Uh, bash already says you know, shell, so I, I should not be saying bash shell because bash is shell. It's born again shell. 
um, and then we uh, it includes a sample program which is test.ttpasm so now we say t test.ttpasm and then just press the enter key it should do everything by itself now so the first thing it's going to do is to upload the code it's going to take a little bit of time but you can you should be able to see this text here changing like that and then it will um, download the file back uh, for the simulator to run object code is good starting the simulator simulation is done submitting the trace data so if you go to the analysis tab now it now reflects the actual execution of the code that we just um, uploaded so we can so this is the entire thing so when this is all done you don't need this tab anymore and then we're just going to close it just in case I accidentally make changes you know to that um, to the app script um, so now I have two assembler setup. Uh, one is the original one and one is the one that I just set up and that's the entire process. So a lot of this particular process um, can, it can be done with other platforms too. So if you have Mac OS or if you have Linux, the only change is um, um, so there the files are slightly different because it has to do with how Mac uh, DOS and Linux, you know, they all have different ways of encoding the end of a file. But other than that, you know, the scripts are basically the same. So the process you know, is almost identical now um, in terms of how to set it up. All right. So I hope this helps to il helps illustrate, you know, how to set up with a spider. Um, it's really simple now that we are using SigWin. So let me close um, this window here. So when you're done, you can just close this window. So we can just close it and say close your console. And there we go. OK. And you can also close the uh, CMD, the, com the command line interface in Windows. So you can close that too. So we'll go ahead and close that. And in the future, if you need to run River Spider again, you can always just you know, kind of use the GUI, navigate to River Spider, navigate to SigWin, um, and then just you know, start SigWin dash portable. Double click that, and it will start up you know, the um, the shell interface that we saw earlier. Or yeah, right here. Okay, so it just opened it in the you know, in the back, so we couldn't see it earlier. So that's an easier way to do it. You you don't really have to go into the Windows you know, command line interface and start up the uh, SigWin command line interface directly. Now from here, you still have to do a CD to refer spider to get into the folder where the commands are and then do a dot slash submit. Um, and you can do all your coding here as well if you want to. Um, you know, in, it's, it makes it a little bit easier if you have all the source files already in the same folder as the um, refer spider folder or you can create subfolders under here then you can also utilize you know, the subfolders to contain all the files. So I do have one little thing to add before we end the video recording. So let me back all the way up to the downloads you know, folder. At this point, you, you don't need the zip file anymore. So you can go ahead and delete the compressed file, which is the zip file. So just hit the delete key. Now this folder, you can actually copy this entire folder onto a thumb drive and run SigWin uh, refer spider from a thumb drive. So that is really kind of convenient because it means that you don't have to reset up everything from scratch and you can take that thumb drive here you know, to any Windows machine and you know basically you know um, navigate to the subfolder and then double click on SigWin dash um, I cannot remember the name. So just navigate to here and then go to SigWin portable and just double click on this particular file and then you can run your know, uh, refer spider again. So this is a really uh, huge convenience feature because you know you can just take the thumb drive to any computer. You can use one that is relatively slow. Um, the only downside of using uh, a thumb drive that is relatively slow or an SD card is um, the initial copying is going to take a long time. Um, but once you have it already um, copied. Um, the actual running of River Spider is going to be about the same speed. It's not going to be slow anymore. So that's uh, the you know, one advantage. So I hope this video helps really to show you how to set up um, uh, River Spider. There's a little bit of process involved here. 
um, especially with the secret string because you know that's kind of like a password and also the URL which has to be done because otherwise um, there's no way for the script to interact with the Google Sheet. All right, cool. So I'm going to stop recording here and upload it.